Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dahlia Society. My name is Kristen and you're watching The Weekly Gather. I really hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all keeping on sewing and making these plans for whatever season you're entering into. Just a little bit about what I've got on today. One of my trusty favorite patterns from last year would have had to have been the Chalk and Notch Fringe Top or Dress. Now I love this top, not only for the style, because the style itself is one of my most favorite designs, but I love the art gallery fabric that I made it's it in. It's one of my most favorite fabrics and one of my most worn items as well, that I have just love this to death, worn it all every through every season. But the art gallery fabric itself is just to die for. It's gorgeous to wear, it washes up beautifully. And everywhere I go, I get comments on this fabric. I'll just give you guys a little bit more of a look so you can see. It, um, it's a fantastic smock style top or dress. Um, yeah, really love it. You can always do it with the buttons down the front or the lovely um, sort of scooped out neckline. I just think it's a really unusual design, but yeah, love the fabric in this. One of my favorite things. This week on the Weekly Gather, I'm going to talk about some of the things I've got in the pipeworks that I'm currently working on. One thing I did make this week was the brilliant little Tazuti apron pattern. I'll give you a little look. I made it in a lovely um, drill fabric. You might remember that from a pattern hole not long ago. Um, yeah, fantastic design. Love the crossover back. I'll pop some video of me in the garden. The beauty about these is it's like a popover style. You don't need to just wear them for cooking. They are a true maker's apron. You can wear them painting. You can wear them cooking. You can wear them in the garden. Um, just really, you know, even like washing the dog or anything in particular that you want, you need to keep your clothing clean. It's a brilliant little pattern. No buttons, no closures, just slips over your head and crosses over at the back. It's a one size fits all. I'm pretty sure this, it says one size fits all, but I think it would probably go up to a size 20, no problem, maybe even a 22. So given the amount of ease and the way that the back opens up, I really think it would fit uh, quite a lot of sizes. Definitely a great little apron and a free pattern. Who doesn't love a free pattern, especially a Tazuti free pattern? Because we all know how much we love their free patterns, especially the Mandy Boat Tee, the Athena Top. Um, yeah, Tazuti have some brilliant little free patterns. Another free pattern I know I've been released a couple of weeks back and I actually hadn't spoken about it was the Peppermint Robe pattern. Um, that was, a, as I say, go on Peppermint website, you'll see all their free patterns. That was in collaboration with the Common Stitch brand um, patterns. So yeah, that's a fantastic little kimono throw on style robe jacket that I think you guys will all love, especially as I say for that lighter weight jacket when it's sort of warming up or cooling down, you will need something to throw Another on. Another pattern I did see on Peppermint that I hadn't made, I just noticed it had been released a couple of months back, was the wide strap um, dress. And that one was designed by Lauren Boyle. So that was a, that's a fantastic little pattern as well. And because of the current climate and because they, everybody needs as much support as we can give, they are asking, even though they're free downloads, that if you can spare a $2 donation, that would be fantastic. But yeah, totally up to you. Um, so if you do click onto the uh, the Peppermint Patterns website. It will give you little links there where you can um, do that if that's what you wish. So fantastic to support these people. Another bit of exciting news this week was that Athena Cacao or AK Patterns has finally returned. Athena had had a year-long break um, teaching uh, in Crete uh, that she had given up her sewing shop and her sewing patterns to fully concentrate on her teaching career. So I think she'd had a wonderful time doing that. And now she's back into um, the whole sewing lifestyle again. And and bringing us more pattern designs as well. So um, I'd personally had pattern tested for her in the past and I loved a lot of her patterns. I do own just about all of her patterns. Maybe there's one or two I don't have. I know yet. she released another new one last week. So that will be on my next episode, which will be new pattern releases. So yeah, if you uh, follow her on Instagram, you'll notice that she's actually back on there with her sewing and her website is open now if you're interested in buying any of her um, very well-known patterns. And talking so. about chalk and notch patterns, which of course is the fringe dress and the all midi dress they've got so many beautiful patterns that I have actually got quite a few of myself they are releasing a new dress hopefully in the next few weeks they're currently testing at the moment and it's going to be called the Marcel dress it hasn't been released but it looks stunning I think everyone heading into summer is going to love this dress it's going to be a staple I'm sure in everyone's wardrobe and of course, it's got the potential for being a pinafore style, which is probably what I'll be wearing it for, but definitely love to make uh, one of these dresses from Chalk and Notch. Yet to be released, but uh, fingers crossed it won't be too far away. And I've also heard in the pipeworks, um, by the time this episode comes out, it probably will already be released. And that's a Friday Pattern Company new blouse um, that's coming out that looks 
gorgeous with the puff sleeves. So all the dramatic sleeves are really back in at the moment. And it is a really big throwback to the 80s and 90s. I really didn't ever think puff sleeves would uh, make a reappearance in the fashion world, but you just never know with things like that. They do come in and out. And I must admit, I'm loving the big dramatic sleeves that everyone's wearing. It's just a lovely statement to make. And talking about statements, the uh, Deer and Doe release last week was the Passiflore dress. Absolutely just caught me. As soon as I saw the Passiflore dress, every other thing I had planned to make took a, um, a back step because I just wanted to get going on this. I had some fabric that I knew that would work perfectly that I really had been mulling over for a while um, what to make with it because I had four and a half metres of this fabric and it was something I'd bought on a clearance table quite a long time ago. Uh, it's a crepe sort of chiffon fabric being such a fabric hungry pattern with the full length and the long sleeve which is exactly what it is it's almost like a, a trench or a wraparound style dress a double breasted style dress that is four and a half meters i knew it was going to work really well especially because it was a 150 centimeter width fabric so i didn't really want to make anything that i was only going to use half i really wanted to make something that would use the majority of that fabric so i could just get rid of it use it up and have something spectacular to show for it so i have cut the pattern out it is a gigantic pattern there are so many pieces probably one of the biggest patterns i've done yet to date um it, it's probably classed as a advanced pattern intermediate to advanced i will be figuring that out i've only started to construct it now awesome. that abby from what abby makes has done a little blog post on the dress itself she made the shorter version with the long sleeve and she did say the same thing about it being quite a big pattern um, not to be taken lightly i think if it's if you really want to um, get stuck into something that's a bit more challenging this is the perfect pattern for that so the deer and doe passive floor you can make um, yeah two variations of the dress so we actually can do a short or a long dress short sleeve or long sleeve you can do a trench coat you could also do a short sleeve double breasted jacket. So it's given you quite a lot of different variations. So to me, it's money well spent. Um, I can do quite a bit with this pattern. I can get lots of looks out of it. So, And being a deer and doe pattern, I just adore their patterns. I just think they are the epitome of feminine classic style um, garments that just look gorgeous and really show off people's shapes no matter what shape that is I think they really do um, do that justice so they they put a lot of thought into their drafting so I think they go from a size 34 to size 52 in the pdf so make sure when you're printing that out you choose the correct layering and the it also has a list of what you will need to print for what pattern you want to do so that will then save you printing out but i personally printed out all of it because i thought i'm going to make it all eventually anyway so i'd rather just put it all together at the start and it really didn't take me that long to put together once um, once you start if you're watching netflix or doing something with your time putting a pdf pattern together can be quite a relaxing task now another thing i have been dreaming of i watched victoria lucille ann's uh, vlog last week all about her knitting escapades and how much she loves her knitting the most gorgeous uh, cardigans that she's knitted up and she said she taught herself mainly from um, blueprint or from just watching tutorials so she's really inspired me to buy some wool and buy a pattern so i haven't bought the wool yet i've bought a pattern though and one of the particular ones that she actually knitted up herself was the perth cardigan from good day night patterns um, which is a gorgeous style pattern knitting company um, i love the look of their a lot of their chunky easy style knits they're not too overly complicated looking and the one i'm looking at knitting has got the fringing on the shoulders so it's been a while since i have knitted anything i know back in the um in the sort of mid 80s i had a lot of knitting i was doing as a teenager had a lot of drama with things because i always attempted things that were way too hard and way out of my league um, but with this kind Kind of thing i think it's just the garter stitch so it's fairly simple being a chunky wool it will hopefully knit up uh, quite fast so yeah really excited to get starting uh, with the knitting for the cold weather i did do a bit of crocheting back about probably five or six years ago now i made a big crochet blanket with really heavy wool and i actually gave myself a wrist injury from this the weight of this blanket because once you start going with your crocheting it can be actually quite an addictive thing and sometimes you don't realize when you're holding that heavy wool it can actually strain your muscles so you got to be careful with that so yeah i hadn't really um hadn't got back into any of the wool crafts since that but i think i should be pretty safe with a with a cardigan another thing to watch out this week too there's a love notion sale if anyone loves the a love notion patterns that you if you pop over to their website you'll see everything is 40 percent off and i think that could be only for the next week or so so great time to snap up some bargains there 
And before I go today, I want to let you know before I go about a couple of people I'm following on Instagram that have really inspired me. And you know, when you follow those people that you look at what they've made, you think, wow, not only have they got the fabric choice spot on, but they've got the styling just perfect for their personality. It really shines through. So there's three particular Instagrammers I'm going to let you know, and hopefully you can jump on and follow them as well. First one is a favorite of mine called So Do It Emma. Um, I think So Do It Emma is a favorite of mine at the moment because I absolutely love everything she sews. I love she takes you on these beautiful nature walks, uh, obviously near her property or on her property. I'm not really sure, but she takes her dog walking and just the most stunning landscapes. Um, she cooks the most beautiful food, everything she makes. Um, I always think I'm going to go and try and make that now. And I know she made some yummy cinnamon scrolls. Um, she does do a bit of bread making, which uh, is personally something I love doing myself. I do have a starter that I've had for probably over a year or so now that I add to every day and I make um, my own bread from that. And I know, especially, I don't know about you guys, but we've had a lot of trouble getting yeast and flour with the whole um, everyone panic buying everything in the grocery stores. So it was so good to have um, a starter already there, and especially if you're making bread or pizza, which we do. So I've actually made the cinnamon scrolls that she had made. They, look, they were scrumptious. Hey, Emma has got some beautiful, beautiful styling happening there, some lovely patterns, and she's always making things as well. The other one I've just come across is called Gina Sews, and I think Gina has got the most glamorous glamorous, gorgeous dress um, patterns that she makes. Her dress sense and her fabric choices are just stunning. And I know Charlene from So So Dressmaking, um, I'd actually seen she'd share one of Gina's makes and that's how I got onto her. So isn't it wonderful when everyone shares something that they're, they're loving and you can sort of share everyone's inspiration around. And I know personally for me, that's how I come up with a lot of my inspiration from seeing what everyone else is doing. Um, and I know people have said that I've inspired them to make certain things. And I think that's just the beauty of the making community. We can all inspire each other. We all have our favourite people we love to follow and, yeah, that keeps the wheel going around for the making community. So that's me and my weekly gather this week. I hope you have enjoyed that. If you have any comments, suggestions, things that you would like me to talk about on the next episode, please let me know. One of the superstitions that I have heard before, this counts for scissors and for knives, is that you should never give a gift of scissors or the friendship will be cut. Now, to me, from what I've heard in the past, if I've ever given knives as a present, so apparently scissors should be sold and not given. So if you're giving someone a gift of scissors, because personally, I would love somebody to give me a beautiful pair of scissors. If you're going to do that, the superstition is that you give a coin um, so that that won't break the, or cut the friendship. For some reason, the coin does it. The coin works. Another superstition is that it's bad luck to sew clothing for someone who is wearing the clothing unless they hold the threads of the garment in their mouth. That's another interesting superstition. Another superstition as well for a New Year's Eve is that you should sew a pillowcase on New Year's Eve that will hold all of your year's troubles in it. So if anyone out there prefers a nice New Year's Eve in, the pillowcase will help you with your problems. So I think maybe we should have all sewn pillowcases last year if we hadn't known what this year would uh, have in store for us. The pillowcases could have helped. So there's a couple of little superstitions. If you know of any more or any traditions or, or people that have taught you things, even... Um, yeah, like family traditions that, have, that you've handed down through the generations. Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what they are because I think they're fascinating. And I'm going to leave the weekly gather there this week. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you again very soon. Don't, don't forget to click and subscribe if you've enjoyed today's episode and give this a thumbs up if you've enjoyed as well. We'll see you very soon. Until next time, bye for now.